Hi, it's Tim Cashel from the Evolve Academy. And in today's example, we have five projectors that are being used as a left and right screen and a three projector blend in the center with these resolutions. We're also gonna take into account a 10 foot gap in between the screens as part of our setup. The background content is coming off a media server that's generating three 3840 by 1080 outputs that'll be butt edged together as a single background. On top of that canvas, we'll be laying the five outputs from the E2 that make up the screen configuration. I've gone ahead and done some pixel math for you and given you the starting H positions for each of those five outputs, along with the pixels for the gap. Using the Event Master toolset and the simulator, I've already pre-configured some items. I've set up three SDIs as sources to look at for later. I've also set up three display ports as the background configuration for our media server. Now they are a single continuous background. I've told the system that they're 3840 by 1080p just so the system knows what resolution we're dealing with. And don't forget you have to disable three HDMIs or other connectors to give those connector capacities to the DisplayPort connectors. Next, we're going to create the destination. I'm going to click on the first HDMI connector and say add screen destination. Then I'm going to click and drag each of the HDMIs that make up this five output configuration. You can do this with SDI as well, as long as you have enough SDI output cards. Then I'm going to select the destination and go to the adjust tab. Under the wide tab is where you're going to configure the background as a canvas. Now you'll notice there's a diagram of your outputs laid out horizontally. From the canvas dropdown, select Use background. And from the background dropdown, we're going to select background one, which is our three display ports from the media server. Then we're going to hit apply as canvas size. Now our outputs are left justified according to the little diagram in the window. So we're going to hit the center justify button to center justify our outputs on the canvas. Now this little diagram may be a little hard to see. So to expand it to the main workspace, you can use the expand button to bring it out to your main area. And with a couple clicks of zoom, you can see the entire canvas. Next, we're going to go into expert mode, and this allows us to move the outputs independently. Clicking on output five brings up a blue outline, and now you can move that output anywhere you want on the canvas or outside the canvas. Clicking on another output selects that as well and adds to the selection. So be careful and remember to unselect an output before moving on to one of the other outputs. Now we're going to select the first output and set its horizontal offset to 1140. Then we're going to deselect output one and select output two and set its H offset to 3600. Notice we now have our gap in between the first two screens. Then we will deselect output two and select output three. Its H offset will be 4800. Then deselecting three and selecting output four, we will set the offset for 6000. Notice that we have our overlap sections for data doubling for our blended projectors. Now we select output five, and we're gonna correct our vertical offset from playing with it earlier to zero. And we're gonna set the H offset to 8460. It's in this expert mode that you have the ability to either separate screens or overlap them on the same destination. Now for the most important step, we're gonna click on the disc icon in the lower left to save all of our work. Now we're going to go to the multi-viewer menu to look at what these outputs look like. We're just gonna look at multi-viewer output one. So going to screen destination one, we're gonna drag the preview into the space. Notice the green vertical lines show the output raster for each of the outputs. Next, we're going to drag the program just so we can see that as well. The multi-viewer is the most accurate way to see the outputs of your destination. And it's very helpful when you begin programming and placing layers. 
Now we're going to go to the programming page. You'll notice that there's a gray bar that represents your active area, and it may look a little bit off. This is normal when working with the simulator in expert mode. If you have an active multiviewer hooked up, you can actually see the output that would be going to the projectors, and is very helpful when programming. Now we're going to drop some inputs into layers on the preview of this destination. Notice there's no markings to know what screen we're dropping them on or where they are in relative position on that screen. This is where it would be handy to have a background still from the background server that shows the screen locations as a reference when you're programming. You could also use the multiviewer output as your reference point. So if you go to the multiviewer, you can see that your layers are shown in the relative position to the actual outputs. If you have an extended desktop setup, this is where it'd be handy to have the second desktop on the multiviewer screen while you're programming. You can also set layers by the numbers. Selecting a layer and going to the window adjustment menu, which is the center of these three menus, you can type in the window size, 1920, to match the first output, and then use your H positions based on your offsets. So our first offset for that screen is 1140. So now, if we look at this on the multiviewer output, we can see that it lines up exactly with our first output. What would be handy right now is to make a user key so that we can apply that to any layer we want to put on the first screen. And we can go ahead and name that user key left screen. Now we're going to do something very similar for the right screen. So selecting the right layer and going to the Adjust tab, and then going to the window adjustments for that layer, we're going to select the size and make it 1920. We're going to adjust the offsets, vertical first to make it zero, and then H offset for that window is going to be 8460 to match our right screen. Again, if we look at it on the multiviewer output, we'll see that it lines up perfectly with our right output, number five. And again, we'll make a user key so that we can apply that size and position to anything we want to put on the right screen. So just to show you that these user keys work, we're going to go ahead and clear our right layer, select our left layer, and drag the right screen user key to it. And it's going to drop it in the position for the right screen. Likewise, we can drop left screen on top of it, and it puts it back on screen one. Be sure to hit save to save all your hard work. One of the advantages to this type of setup is to be able to take a single layer and stretch it across multiple screens. So here we're rescaling layer one and positioning it. And if you look at the multi-viewer, it is now stretched across several of our screens. And that completes our first example of a background as a canvas. I'm Tim Cashel with the Evolve Academy. Thank you for watching.